Hi everybody, I hope you're doing great today, and my name is AJ, and today we're going to go over switch statements. And what switch statements provide you a way to do is, let's say you had a program where you were doing a lot of if-else statements. Like you had 20, you needed 20 else-if statements or if-else statements, and because you were checking for so many things, and that can be really annoying. Well, there is a more convenient way to write like 20 more uh, choosing statements or if-else statements, and it's called a switch statement. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn about switch statements. So in a switch statement, we we use the keyword switch, and I need and it takes a parameter that we need, and the parameter will determine what the switch statement uses to make decisions. So in this case, I have an int a, and I'm going to see an a, and so it's going to take an integer a. And then it's going to have um, closing and opening parentheses. And so now in between the switch statement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have cases. And I'm sorry, just uploading another video on YouTube. So now that that is the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set cases. So instead of if if and else if statements, this is how you kind of set cases. This is how an easier way to, to make a huge else if statement or an, lots of if else statements. So what I do is I do case and then I need to give case a number and the number that case is going to be is what is going to happen if A is this certain number. So let's say I say case 1 and then I need to follow it by a colon. So if case is if, if the case is 1, meaning if the output of A is 1, I'm going to see out this is one. And then I'm going to end L. Okay? And now let's say the thing that makes this really easy is instead of doing else if or is if else again, if let's say I wanted to make a case where the number is two. So what I can do is I can just make another case and well I copied and pasted there, and I can say this is two. And then I can do the same thing for this is three. And note I could say four, five, negative 5, negative 60, negative 600, it doesn't matter, I'm just making a pretty easy example here. So there you go, there, there are all these cases. So it's going to check if that case is, tr if, it, if the case is 3, then it's going to run that operation. Let me make this 3, just so it's easier to run. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this program here, just to show you guys. And so now I'm going to give it an output of 3. And so it printed out this is 3. So it went into the switch statement and said, is it 1? No. Is it 2? No. Is it 3? Yes. So it printed out this is 3. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you guys another example of something that you may come across later if you're trying to do this later. So let's say I entered 1. Whoa, that's pretty weird. So it went in and it said, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So even though the number was just 1, I printed out all three of these statements. That seems pretty wrong, right? Well, that seems like something you would not want. In effect, you want, you'd only want this statement to execute, just like an if statement. Only one statement in an if and else if block executes, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do, so what, what you actually, you're missing here is another keyword, and the keyword is called break. And what the break does is so, break is a keyword that can be used in loops or any other statement. So break is a other word you probably want to put in each of your cases is, you break means to break out of the loop or break out of the statement. So switch is a sort of looping structure or a um, conditional structure. And so if it when it reaches this break, what it does is it automatically breaks out of the nearest structure to it. And the structure surrounding it initially is this switch statement. So it's going to break out of the switch statement, which means it's going to go here. And then it's going to go down and hit the return zero, and then the program's going to complete. So just for an example, let me run this again, and I'll show you guys. So this time, I'm going to enter in 1, and I just get this is 1. I don't get the other inputs. And just to show you guys another example, I'm going to rerun it, and I'm going to put in 2, and I'm get this is 2. So after it hit this is 2, instead of printing out this is 2 and this is 3, it broke out, went to hit this end of the parentheses, and then went down all the way to this bracket when it, where it hit the return 0. Actually, return zero, it won't go to this bracket because once it hits the return zero, then it breaks out of that function call. And since main method is your main function, that is all you need. So that's pretty cool with the switch statement. There also is one other thing you can do in a um, switch statement. So we've learned about break, we've learned about case, we've learned about switch, and now we're going to learn about default.
So default doesn't need a condition. It just needs, doo -doo 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 -doo, let me show you guys. It just needs, um, it doesn't need a parameter because what default is, is default is the equivalent of the else statement in an if else structure. So, you know, this is kind of saying, you know, if this is true, do this. If this, if it's two, do that. If it's three, do this. But the default meaning, if none of these other things kind of broke down, I want to print out this is default. So let me show you, let me show you guys just an example here. So I'm going to run the program again. And I'm going to get, I'm going to print out five, and then I'm going to print out this is default. So if, if one isn't true, if two isn't true, if three isn't true, then I'm going to run the default. And usually you see the default at the end of your switch statement. That's very good logic. You can put it anywhere though. Actually, no, put it, put it at the end. I'm sorry. Put it at the end. Don't, don't always listen to me, guys. So that's pretty cool. So that is a really awesome thing to do is that that is how you do a, um, an NFL statement, a switch statement. And switch statements really only work with the numbers. So they kind of don't work with um, other things, which is kind of a bummer. So it's really, it's not exactly like an NFL statement where you can check for other things. But um, you can see why a switch statement can be very nice. For instance, if you need to check out or make a different output on 10 different numbers. So remember with the switch statements, it's all encompassed by the word switch with a closing and ending parenthesis. And then you have case, case, and then you give it the number you're looking for followed by a semicolon. And then you print out and don't forget the break, which should be in every case statement so that once, because once it hits this statement, it will evaluate the true and then it will think everything else is true. Unless, but if it hits a break, it will break out of this switch statement and go down here. So that's why it's very important to have the break statement, and why it's and why it's very important. Also, default is used when none of when nothing else is executed in the if block. It is executed by default. That's why it's called deep block. And remember, don't forget those colons and don't forget those semicolons after you do a command here. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys have a great day. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and ask me. And I'll see you guys later.